Hey everybody, Eric from Orchestra Gold here. So, this is the first video in a little mini series that we're doing. And this series is going to culminate in the release of a new song that we've been working on. But this particular video is really just going to be focused on us telling the story a little bit of what's been happening in our lives throughout this last year. A lot has changed. And through these interviews, you'll see some of these themes kind of come up for us to chew on. Themes of hope, themes of resilience, and themes of frustration, which is very real and shouldn't be ignored. We'd like to give a shout out to the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco for making this work possible through a very generous grant that we've got. And I want to give a special shout out to, to Preston, the man who's always been such a huge supporter of our work. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, brother. So this video is really just a small vantage into what our lives have been like here during the last year as a result of the situations. I think the most important theme to highlight, though, is really that of opportunity and the beautiful sort of blessing that's disguised in this situation. The other videos in this series are really going to talk about the song itself and what it means and how we came up with it. Um, Mariam is going to talk about the lyrics. I'm going to do a little video on us recording it and the mixing and all that other jazz. But really, this particular video is to set the context for the rest of that work. And that really is the subtext of this situation, is that for us, it's really been about finding a new process that not only lets us work in this situation, but is actually a better fit for what our particular goals are as musicians. Oh, and then just a brief note, this may be obvious, but Due to the logistical concerns of managing the situations as they are right now, uh, we weren't able to get all the band together for interviews. So this is just Luis and, uh, and Aaron right now talking. Hopefully we can feature more people later on. I mean, at first there was no gigs. Um, so I was sitting around the house a lot. Uh, I didn't touch my drums very much. And, um, and now, about seven or eight months into the pandemic, there are some gigs that are popping up, but um, you know they don't look anything like gigs did before in the sense that um, a lot of these are happening really grassroots style, you know, in people's backyards and neighborhoods and the streets. Um, a lot of live streaming happening, which means that, you know, if you want to do a gig, you have to learn how to uh, use a lot of the technology to get the audio and the visuals up and, you know, figure out how to broadcast and just a lot of, a lot of tech stuff involved. But, um, you know, so now I'm, now I'm starting to play some gigs more regularly, which is great. Um, but then of course, you know, figuring out how to get paid is another thing. So, uh, a lot of these are, you know, relying on tips or using Patreon and, um, it's just a lot of, a lot of work to do. But the cool thing is that, um, you know, these, uh, some of my favorite gigs to play have always been intimate house concert style grassroot kind of gigs. So in a way this is more pleasurable than you know, playing in clubs and stuff that I was doing before. The biggest change is uh, um, in my fundamental perspective of what I'm doing as a musician. It seemed to have given it a lot more clarity. Uh, my role and function as a musician or an artist, it seemed to, it was always like sort of the same amorphous concept for me, but now it's sort of crystallized into like, I know what I need to be doing. I guess a sense of purpose, maybe it gave me a sense of purpose. But my my goal as a as a musician is to provide an experience for 
somebody who might encounter me that they might remember and take away as a genuine one and not something that was contrived or uh, created online or created in somebody's some advertiser's mind it's just something that like they could think back on and say hey man that was pretty good hmm. you know may, might not be mean success for me as a career artist but it was it's like successful in that achieved the goal of like affecting somebody in a genuine way there's not enough of that and i just remember as a younger person in my travels around the world and around uh, the country uh, from time to time encountering an artist that really affected me and that you know they're not going to be um, on everybody's lips or trending or anything like that but they really affected me as a person and as a, a musician and I still remember them and uh, I just want to be that for somebody that's enough for me I want to be that person that they remember it was actually something good that they ran into you know I also have a lot more time to practice now. Um, so sometimes I'm, you know, taking that opportunity and going in the practice room a lot, you know, and just kind of stepping back, zooming out and thinking about the direction that I want to go in. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm also learning how to, how to use music software that I never really took the time to do before, how to write and produce my own music. Uh, which is which is an added bonus to this whole thing. Pandemic has been actually quite good for my artistry and my artistic uh, goals. I've practiced a renewed. I've had a renewed awakening in the woodshed of all my instruments: like flute, saxophone, guitar. I've learned how to play flute a lot better. I've taught my daughter how to play guitar, and that was a really wonderful experience. And I do you remember the last it wasn't just the last gig I had it was the last thing that I really did before the pandemic really hit America and that's that I opened uh, with Orchestra Gold at the uh, UC Theater opening up for Mulato at Statke and it was the most amazing experience such a fun show there were so many people there dancing and enjoying themselves and it was like real music, African music and uh, jazz and all these things that I'm talking about. And there was a theater full of people loving it. And that gives me hope. For instance, myself, I discovered uh, a, uh, my, my love for freestyle rapping, which I usually kind of kept under wraps. And uh, I spent about a few months during the pandemic um, going live on, on social media. Um, and uh, I kind of unleashed it on the world. <laughs> and it was a way for, for me to be connected to people. Um, I collaborated with uh, other rappers that are, you know, actual rappers that are, that are way better than me. Um, but I would never have done that if it wasn't for um, the cabin fever that I was experiencing. <laughs> Yeah, I think most musicians that I know discovered some new skill or facet of their of their creativity um, and really strengthened that during the pandemic. Some of the musicians that that I know, um, for instance. Um, the Jazz Mafia, I've seen, um, especially uh, some of the leaders like Adam Thies and Shayna Evanick, um, they've really uh, used this opportunity to to figure out how to stay in touch and connected with, with their fans. Um, so they have this weekly series they have, Jazz Mafia Tuesdays, which is really inspirational. Basically, um, they, they broadcast a live concert in their backyard every week um, using using Patreon to um, monetize what they're doing. Um, and, you know, like they, they figured out how to get all the tech stuff going so they can um, bring a really high quality performance to people and um, 
that's that's inspirational to me. Musicians are a resilient bunch. We already we're doing this for free, man. Basically, there's like so few of us that actually make a living. When you look at who's actually making music out there, and the ones that are making a living, they just got you know knocked back real hard because it's not a profession where there's a social safety net for you or any sort of income other than the cash you bring in. It's a total hustle. All right. So you want to talk about the resilience of Ameri of a musician, American musician. Resilience of American musician is knowing that you're going to do what you do best without much monetary reward and doing it anyways. And we've been doing it and we're still doing it and we're going to keep doing it. And that's just the way it is. And maybe some of y'all should go out and support your friends every once in a while and like go see them play or buy their CD or like even live stream their shit and show them you actually give a shit unless you don't care about music, which is the signals I've been getting for the last few years is that the American public doesn't care about art, doesn't care about music, doesn't care about anything that's beautiful. And all they care about is this. Many of us discovered, uh, rediscovered, you know, just, uh, uh our connections to each other and how important that is. And, um, you know, just, uh, how, how important it is to stay connected to what keeps us sane. You know, that's a question that I've been asking a lot of people during this time. What is keeping you sane? <laughs> it's wonderful that there's uh, organizations like the Yerba Bueno Center and, and other organizations that like attempt to like try to, help our country develop its culture yeah it's tough i moved to france and they'd have me i have no money though <laughs> <laughs> i'm stuck here in california in the republic of california and for a lot of musicians and artists you know um, we're getting back in touch with just creating for the the pure pleasure of creating and um you know seeing where that goes. It, it, the pandemic crystallized it, but over the last, I guess, 10 years or 15 years, I've just noticed the experience of performing as a musician has changed so much. Um, and I just, it went from like the experience was like the a, a cathartic, you know, a catalyst for, you know, unity. And then it became that the performance almost became secondary to the the branding that went on afterwards, like uh, as far as like posting things on social media videos and whatnot. The band is engaged in that. The audience is engaged in that. The club's engaged in that. And to the point of which like the actual experience of the performance was diluted. It felt diluted to me. And I just wanted to create, I want to create a space as an artist where we can return to having that feeling of being together in a room and not being preoccupied with uh, what are what what being there, uh, how being there affects our image or portrays us, you know. Just dancing and singing and having a good time instead of you know worrying about the perfect picture, or the perfect post, you know, how many followers you get or how many likes you get for something, you know. Got to get away from that. It's corrosive. You know, I think uh, music has been uh, taken over by all these uh, salespeople. Now, if you're uh, to be a successful musician, you have to be a successful salesperson to sell yourself. And I just, just refuse to participate in it. Building my brand could suck my dick. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Building my brand. We all ought to be ashamed of ourselves. <laughs> People need music because uh, music is is a spirit. It's like a, an embodiment of spirit and of hope and joy and um, and I think that it's one thing that can. Um, bring people together for lack of a, a, a better way to say it. Um, you know, I think that music is something that kind of can extend past borders and can 
make booty shake whether you're in a red or a blue state you know when prince comes on and and, and if you can't dance to that if it doesn't move you then something's wrong with you and what i'm hopeful for is that this experience um for our country and for the world makes us have a greater appreciation for things like music and art and theater and you know all these things that enrich life and you know and point us into the direction of like what's hopeful about life and about humans and that we could see that and that uh, uh, hopefully and increase the appreciation and the hunger for it and we can all have a big party when this is done with music and dancing and like food and just like have a good time and like let loose and look at this as it as it is a thing of the past and a thing of history that we all live through together In the next video, we're going to have Marama talking about the song and Mr. Kerbal talking a little bit about the drums that he's playing on it. So we hope you stay tuned for that next time. This is me wishing you well. Take care. Be well. Be good to yourself and everyone else. And we'll see you soon.